Hello everyone. I have a bit of Elden Ring footage left over that I thought I would talk about a little bit. Here I'm invading in the Murkwater Catacombs with the Dragon Scale Sword, which uh, was a sword I decided to pick up and stat for simply because it had a, a tiny bit of faith scaling. And I mean, it was really very negligible amounts of faith scaling. Uh, but it was better than the axe that I used for a vast majority of the invasions, and I really wish I had realized that buffing this thing gave me significantly better damage than pretty much anything else. Here I'm out of uh, resources to heal with, so I use a tiny bit of FP to get this uh, shield weapon art off, which heals at an incredibly broken rate. The nice thing about this is that it isn't like a warmth that heals anyone inside of it, enemies included. It'll literally only heal the team that cast it. Um, not sure if it will heal other invaders, but it will actually heal PvE enemies. Any healing that you do will heal PvE enemies, and I don't have any good examples of it at the moment, but I do, um, in another video, we will take a, a look at an instance of that occurring, which is something that I didn't hear anyone talking about, actually, after the network test. A large portion of uh, invasions in Elden Ring so far have been uh, just trying to get the host away from their phantoms so that they can go off and die somewhere else. Uh, or, more specifically, just kind of splitting up the party so that you can engage in single fights rather than three people simultaneously rushing at you across an empty field. And if you are in that situation where there are three people chasing you across an empty field, then you're going to be doing a lot of turn and burning. It's kind of hard to launch a surprise attack with, um, no, no surprise. <laughs> There's been a lot of running away with uh, an attempt to use the Phantom Bloody Finger in order to hopefully escape. Here I'm using the Beast Claw spell a lot, which is pretty much the only faith miracle that a lot of people used. And I really just like it, liked it because it was fast, it didn't cost very much, and it was good for space control. It gave me a lot of zone control that I would not have otherwise been able to do. Now, the Flame of Frenzy is also like that, but the Flame of Frenzy also takes longer to cast and um, has longer end lag, while Beast Claw just kind of came out. Beast Claw also did really just broken amounts of damage. It was just disproportionately better than everything else for no real reason. Um, and it, it broke my Pyromancer theme a little bit, but it also kind of acted like Pyromancies do, being like a, a mid-range spell, and that was nice. Here you will see the uh, mentioned jump spamming that uh, has been occasionally posited as a problem by other invaders where, you know, using the iframes on the jump like a roll gets you out of a lot of situations. Um, I did not really find this to be too much of an issue. Um, it really didn't become too much of a problem even here. I'm trying to keep this engagement as two 1v1 fights instead of letting my invader friend get overwhelmed, so I kind of uh, cut this guy off as he is uh, coming at me with his soul swords, his glintstone arch uh, weapon art. I see that this guy is out of uh, Estus, and I realize that it's time to do a chase down. And I have found that the O Flame spell is very, very good at this kind of thing because it lasts for a decent time and it comes out extremely fast. And it caught him right out of the air there if you managed to time it. it. Took a couple tries, but it did end up fulfilling the job. Like I said before, O Flame is more like a flash sword rather than like a black flame, as you know it in Dark Souls 3. It's not, um, it's not the big burst melee attack that it was in the past. This is more like the combustion weapon art from Dark Souls 3, but with more attacks added, like with the running and rolling. This silly invasion here, uh, his phantom left 
And here I am, just trying to finish him off. And then I realize that this crab can hit me. So uh, I leave. <laughs> and I go, okay, if he's just going to roll into that wall, then I'm just going to finish this quickly. And I just spam, slam a frenzy into him. Because I'm really not about to... I'm really not about to let this guy just get away with running away from me. You know? Now, I have said that I tried to make this build like the Demon Souls Mage, to the best of my ability. Um, but, you know, that was only so possible. Um, here is me trying to use the Fireball to do a roll catch, and, like, hitting with what would have, even in Dark Souls 3, been a hit off of that explosion hitbox. But he was still able to uh, roll through it, which could have been latency, could have been just that it's small. But I could not, for the life of me, get a free aim with that fireball, no matter how hard I tried. It just didn't seem like a practical option. Which is such a shame, because I like a nice fireball. I just like a good fireball. Even if it's, like, kind of crappy. But this was really bad. It was really bad to the point of being unusable. I'm pretty sure I hit two people with it in my entire time of trying to use it in PvP. And honestly, that wasn't too much, because, um, it was bad. A fully charged Flame of Frenzy does, like, really absurd damage, and then on top of that, I think it comboed into a hit from the Tree Sentinel, which finished this fight uh, much faster than it probably normally would have gone. <laughs> I'm hoping that in the final release of the game, we will not only get a big fuck-off fireball, a la Great Chaos Fire Orb, or even, like, Black Fire Orb, um, and I hope that we will get a big fuck-off melee range explosion, a la Black Flame and Ignite. Um, but even if we end up having things that are completely different, like Flame of Frenzy, or even Beast Claw, I will be satisfied with it, because the damage on those is quite good, even at this low, low level, with these uh, non-scaling talismans, um, and I can, I can live with that. I can live with that, and I can also live with O Flame the way it is, because I like a nice melee spellcasting option. I would like it to do more damage, even than what it does now, I, I admit, because you are, like, paying a good amount of FP for that thing. But it does function as a chase down, a roll catch, and a fast get off me option. Also, as a way to avoid parries, because it can't be parried. It can't even be spell parried, it's an explosion. <laughs> that is the nice thing about it. it. It's just kind of a way to circumvent the melee rock, paper, scissors of the game. Um, also, this spell is really broken. Dragonfire, it's too much. I believe we talked about this before, um, but I would just like to reiterate that it is, despite its slow startup, um, it has a lot of damage and a lot of stun, and it's almost impossible to roll away from. Free aiming Flame of Frenzy um, also does a fair amount of damage for its cost, uh, but at least it's not like Dragonfire, where it will just absorb your entire FP bar but also net you a kill pretty much every time, at least on a phantom. Though I guess health is the same across the board now, so phantom health and host health is the same. That's gonna be weird getting used to, but it's nice. The lightning weapon art that I'm using on this axe is incredibly strong, um, especially in water, and there's like an entire swamp area that I used it in quite a bit because it will increase the area of effect of the lightning. The lightning weapon art was also a really good chase down, uh, as well as a roll catch. If somebody's just rolling away from you and they have, like, no health, the lightning weapon art was very good. Granted, I always preferred to try and hit with the uh, O Flame, but if they were too far, then I just used the lightning. I'm not even sure how this Phantom Bloody Finger is going to work in the final game. Like, 
Is it going to be a limited consumable that we're gonna have to craft with the crafting system? Is it gonna be something we earn? Is it going to be something that's found in the world? Like, there are a lot of moving parts and pieces. It's hard to say exactly how the implementation will be. Will we just get 10 off the bat? If we just get 10 off the bat, that might be decent. Is it gonna be infinite use? I mean, it's very difficult to say because, I mean, as good as it is, it's still not as good as a fully kitted party was for this network test. And you know, maybe it shouldn't be. Like, there is that to consider. Like, should the power of an invader be exactly the same as a host and phantoms? I mean, I would say yes, but you know, you have to balance for things like the experience of the invaders and the, like, tasks that have to be completed by the host and party. And is it fair to have those things be the same numerically when there's a differential of experience? I mean, I would say yes, because I invade people who are also experienced and prepared most of the time, and that's kind of what I'm looking for. But I also like that challenge of a party that is fully prepared and ready to go versus me, who is also prepared, but slightly underpowered relatively to what a full-fledged gank can accomplish. Something interesting to note here is that the uh, glitch with the uh, glint sword arch um, has the same network error and desync property of a homing soul mass as in previous Dark Souls games, so that, that code is roughly the same. Because sometimes, even from Dark Souls 1 to, to, f to 3, you'll have instances where homing soul masses will stay floating above the heads of people when it's already been launched. So I guess that's still in. <laughs> That's a glitch that I would not mind patched, because it's really annoying to see and then try and avoid, and then you realize, oh, it's just not really there. After having played with this build and enjoying it so much, I'm really struggling with whether I'm going to start Elden Ring as a full int build, or I'm going to run a faith build now, because there are so many interesting choices for a faith build. Uh, as there are for an int build. And there are so many new and interesting spells for an int build that it's it's very, very difficult for me to decide which I want to experiment with more first. I can almost anticipate that uh, when I get my hands on the game, I'm probably gonna start as one and then like stop before I'm done and then start another and then go back and forth between them until one of them is finished, I'm sure, knowing me. It's going to be a hard, hard decision to make. The nice thing about O'Flame is that even when people are running away from... Even when people are running away and have no interest in engaging, they're waiting for their blue to show up, they're waiting for help, they're desperately, desperately trying to escape your various chase down and roll catch options with no interest in fighting you, that you can always eventually rely upon something fast and consistent to kill with. Which I really wish were the case in the games leading up to this one. I would love to be able to do running combustion or running black flame. It would make things so much easier. A lot of my burst damage is coming from Beast Claw and Flame of Frenzy, so this, like, zoning tactic that I picked up, which is more akin to sorcery than pyromancy, um, it lent itself very well to maintaining a safe spacing, as well as getting kills. And I didn't do it all the time. Granted, I lost a lot, a lot, a lot of these invasions, and mostly in stupid ways, or just by running out of resources before a party 
you know, was able to just blunder me. But for the most part, keeping my distance and trying to get hits off with Flame of Frenzy, like, that was a third of this person's health off of one Flame of Frenzy. And a fully charged one, too. You could free aim the Flame of Frenzy, and you could free aim Beast Claw. So all you had to do was, you know, guess where they would roll, mix up your timing, and you would do fantastic amounts of damage over the course of however long it took you. Plus, because you weren't in melee range, you were only opening yourself up to other enemy spells. And not many people use spells, to be completely honest. Aside from the weapon art options. But even if they try to roll the Flame of Frenzy, I was able to catch them using the multi-hit properties of it. So, if they were just in range of it, I would catch them with, you know, a good chunk of damage. And that's just what I like. A good chunk of damage. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.